Hi there, I'm Letitia Finder and welcome to my channel for another episode of Follow Along Friday. Today we're going to be making this cute little cupcake from start to finish. I'm going to show you how to draw it and then how to color it using these colors and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're actually going to be using this cupcake in a pop-up card next week so I thought it would be fun this week to show you how I did it. Alright, so I'm actually going to be drawing it a lot bigger uh, this time than I did it first just so you guys can see it in better detail because I mean this isn't super small but you'll be able to see it better and when it's bigger <laughs> all right but just just a quick note when I sized this all I did was take uh, the size card I wanted this is an A2 size card uh, I traced it out and I just used it as a guide and I ended up making this about oh, half the size of the folded card um, height wise so that's all I did to size it, just if you're curious. Alright, so you'll need a pencil, an eraser, you'll need uh, some sort of fine liner, I'm using a Micron, uh, and then you'll need your coloring utensils. I'm going to be using Copic, so this is going to be a little bit of a Copic, to col bleh, Copic coloring tutorial. <laughs> and uh, I'll go over the colors and whatnot uh, when we get there. Alright, so... Let's get started. Um, when, whenever I'm drawing a cupcake, because believe it or not, I do draw them quite often, I always start with this bottom half of the icing. And that just gives me a good uh, gauge of how big I'm making it and all that good stuff. So I'm just going in and I'm drawing a long oval. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm doing it lightly. Uh, just so that I can erase it later on because like these this line here isn't gonna stay there like it's just a guide for now um, and then when you go over it with your uh, black uh, fine liner then uh, you're gonna want to erase any of these like sketchy lines or anything like that all right so I'm just drawing I've just drawn this oval this long oval and then I'm gonna go in I'm gonna start with this side just wherever you'd like that little dip in the icing to be. And I'm just, just curving it inwards. Do it a little darker so you guys can see here. All right. And then I'm going to curve it the opposite way slightly. And then again, the opposite way. So we're going to, we're coming into this little peak here in the icing and you can play with it a little bit and adjust it this is the time to do it when you're using the pencil it doesn't have to be perfect or anything because I can never get icing perfect on a cupcake so <laughs> that's what I'm going off of my memory of my very poorly iced cupcakes all right so we're just going to do the same thing on the other side here we're going to kind of start off around the same spot and curve it out, or in, sorry, curve it inward. I'm just going to fix that a little bit. Curve it inward. And then right here, I'm just going to stop for a moment because I'm starting to curve back up. I'm going to create this peak. So I'm just going to kind of connect them here, just curve them into each other. I like to see so far it's fairly simple so I thought this would be a fun one to show you guys so I'm actually just gonna quickly go in here and I'm just gonna erase this middle line because we don't need it at all and we don't want it to confuse you and if you want to go in and kind of just erase any marks that you know aren't quite right or you're not going to need so that you're not confused when you're lining it later. All right, I'm actually just going to make that a little higher there. All right, so I'm just bringing a little tip out on the end here just to give it a little bit of definition. Those are just those lines. Um, all right. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to just lightly erase this uh, bottom line here. 
as you can see because I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve along the bottom here. So I've just placed this to the side so that we have a reference. And this doesn't have any like re method to the madness. I'm just making some curvy lines. That's fine. <laughs> And then you can go in here and add your sprinkles. Um, they're just kind of like bean shaped. They're just curved, long ovals. You can just kind of put them wherever. They're sprinkles, they fall wherever they want. <laughs> so. That's fine, we'll do that. Um, I, don't, I don't really like that one there. We'll get rid of it. All right, so now we're gonna go in and create the actual cake part, which is very, very simple to do. Just gonna come right on the end here and curve. And just bring that curve all the way across. So again, just it's like a semi oval, long oval, I guess. We're not curving it all the way around, we're just doing the bottom half of it. Like so. Again, you want to work fairly light so that you can erase any of these lines. And I am going to erase some of these lines because as you can see, these aren't connected lines here. Um, and just for the sake of keeping this simple for you guys, I'm going to do it now instead of just when I'm using the fine liner. So generally I would just go over with the fine liner and then that's permanent, like whatever you've done. So then I'll just erase any marks later, but uh, just for the sake of keeping it simple, we'll do it like this. All right. So now all we have to do is this, uh, the cupcake wrapper. So to do this, I'm going to start off on this side here. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but it kind of juts out a little bit. And then it's got all these squiggly lines going all the way around. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to jut it out a little. This curved little line. And then we're just going to make the little ridges in the cupcake paper. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. So they're basically just waves almost, just curved lines going all the way around. I'm going to stop here and I'm just going to create that first one there and connect them. There you go. Very simple. All right. Now we're going to go down and just create the bottom of the whole cupcake, the base of it. And to do that, I'm just going to curve the line in just slightly until you hit where you want to be. I think we're going to stop it about here. So I'm just going to draw a straight line across just so I know uh, where I'm stopping this. And again, on the other side, you're just going to curve down. It wasn't a straight line. <laughs> you're just going to curve down into that line. Now, I'm just going to So you guys can see this a little bit better, I'll use those lines. Alright, so now you've got this baseline here, that's how, you know, where the bottom is going to be. And then you've got these edges here. So all I'm going to do is just create these curved edges, going to soften them a bit, just by rounding them off. Now, I'm not going to leave this completely straight the way it is. You can, um, but if you want it to make it look a little more realistic or a little more dimensional, um, not that this is a realistic looking cupcake. I'm going to erase it. Lots of erasing I do, I know. <laughs> not perfect. I never get it right the first time. So, <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to come out 
and I'm going to curve it ever so slightly coming down this way. And it's just very, very slight. See, this was my original line here, so I'm just curving it like this until um, both ends are connected again. And that's it. So I'll just erase that because I just used it to show you guys. And that's how I draw a cupcake. Um, now, I am going to go in and I'm just going to put like some more definition lines in here. Like, There's probably a line there and there. We'll put one there. And that's just where we're going to add a little bit of definition in with the fine liner. Um, and then just some lines just some kind of curved ticky lines here like you get on the cupcake wrappers like so and that's it that's all there is to the drawing actually I'll just keep that there for reference still and I'm gonna go in with my micron now so I'm just using uh, a 03, and we're just going to outline it. I'm going to go in and start, you can start wherever you like, um, there's really, really no, uh, again, no method here, they're just, just following the lines that you created. over sprinkles this is making me a little hungry I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I'll add in a couple of these lines I'll add one there too and then we'll move on to the cake part And now the wrapper. and I made a little boo-boo there. That's okay. Okay, so, you know, don't be like me. Take your time doing it. I'm just trying to do this kind of fast for you guys, so this video isn't, like, not a good amount of time in like <laughs> Why did I say it like that? So this video isn't too long. <laughs> Alright. So I'm just going to let that marker, or the the fine liner set for a second. And I'll start erasing up here just because I know this is what I did first. And I'm just going to get rid of these these pencil marks. Um, I, I'm using a little mini mechanical pencil eraser <laughs> because of course I can't find an eraser anywhere today. So this was my solution. <laughs> this, uh, this pencil actually doesn't have any lead in it so I can't use the actual pencil if you're wondering why I'm switching <laughs> between them. That is why. Alright. That's good enough. Oops. Okay. Let's, do, let's start coloring with Copics. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, just start off with, I think we'll just Go top to bottom again, and the, there's no super amazing trick to this or anything. Um, for each section, except for the bottom section, I'll go over that in a second, I'm using two colors, a light and a, a darker color. So for the icing, I went with um, R11, which is pale cherry pink, and R32, which is peach. 
And to start off with those, I'm just taking the lightest color, which is um, R11. And I'm just going to add in a light, or light, um, a layer, sorry, <laughs> of the lighter color, so this color here. And forgive me, I'm again trying to go a little bit fast here. Um, your coloring won't take very long because uh, it'll be smaller. Well, unless you are doing it on a bigger scale for, you know, whatever you're using it for. But um, again, I just <laughs> I wanted to make it bigger for you. Here, I'll use the chisel. Uh, bigger for you guys, uh, just so you could see it a little bit better. Uh, and that means it's going to take a little, <laughs> a little bit more time. And this works really well, like the technique we're about to do um, on, say, like the smaller image because the ink here will, will still be kind of wet while you're working through it. I'm just kind of going back over it again just to make sure it's saturated enough. So I'm going to go in with the peach now and I'm going to add some to some of the darker areas. So like these indentations would be darker. I'm going to go kind of, we're seeing that my light source is up here, coming from this way, if that makes sense. So up where this cupcake is now, that's where the light source is coming from. All right, so we'll have some darker areas here, some down here. I think I'm just going to do kind of this whole area a little darker. And uh, I'll end up doing uh, some drawing tutorials or some like basic art techniques, drawing techniques, uh, just the art basics. And if that's something you guys are interested in or if there's anything uh, specific that you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to accommodate um, and help you guys out. So I'll go over things like lighting, uh, like where shadows should be and basic supplies and stuff like that. So I think that would be really helpful to anybody starting out or anybody interested in kind of upping their art game. <laughs> All right, so oh, that's, that's pretty good there. Just add a little bit more. Like I said, this isn't going to take you as long as it's taking me because I'm kind of, <laughs> that's one thing I should have maybe taken into consideration when I decided uh, to do it bigger. So now I'm just going back in with the original lighter color and I'm just blending the two right here. Um, just because they weren't, they aren't in the same. Uh, I'm trying to say color family. I don't know if that's the right terminology for that. It, the numbers on the Copics are a system, so the 11 is nowhere near the 32, and uh, I can go over that in a video if you like as well. But uh, basically, they just aren't in the same grouping. I guess maybe is this the right word. Um, so I'm just trying to blend them fairly well. Uh, a lot of the times, or a lot of people tell you that you need a third color in there. Uh, that's not necessarily true. This 
I mean, this worked fine. I think it's going to depend on the colors that you're using as well, but generally this works. All right, so for the cake part, I'm going to go in. I have got two colors here. So I have E15, which is dark suntan, and E18, which is copper. And I'm just going to, again, same idea. Just put a layer of this lighter color first. And I will get to the sprinkles in a moment. I'm not skipping over them purposely. Or I am skipping over them purposely, sorry. <laughs> Just trying not to go over the lines here too much, and I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. <laughs> the video is already going on 20 minutes, so I don't want to keep it going much longer, but uh, it shouldn't be too much longer. We we'll just have the bottom to color after this. Alright, so I've got a pretty good base going on there. We're going with our darker color here, which is the E18. And now see these two are in the same grouping, the the E15 and the E18. Alright, so I'm just going to go in and we'll have shadow coming in at the bottom here because this is where the icing meets the actual cake. So I'll just throw that in. Basically this whole thing is going to be uh, darkened. But I want to, I do want to leave uh, a few areas here a little bit later just to give it around the bottom here for a little bit of depth. Just to give it a little more interest. Again, we're going to blend it in a moment so it's not going to look uh, so funny. <laughs> it looks a little funny right now. So. Just going to thicken that line a little bit. Alright, we'll go back in with our uh, lighter color. And we're just going to Saturate it some more and blend, blend the two together. And as the ink kind of settles a little bit more into the paper, and I'm just using white cardstock, by the way, I thought I should mention that. Um, as it soaks into the paper a little bit more, you'll be able to Layer, layer it a little better and maybe uh, saturate the paper a little bit more so it looks a bit darker and then it blends really well. So. Alright, All right, so now we're going to move on to the bottom and for the bottom I'm actually going to use three colors. Um, you use what you have. If you don't have three colors that's fine and again I'm doing this in Copics but you can use you know whatever markers or coloring utensils that you'd like. Uh, but for Copics, um, my latest color is V000, which is Pale Heath. Um, then we have V05, which is Marigold. And then V06, which is Lavender. So those are the colors that I'm using for the bottom here. I'm going to go again with my latest color. I'm just going to go over this. The chisel tip is uh, better for going over bigger areas. I do prefer generally when I'm drawing to or coloring or whatever uh, to use the brush tip. I honestly use the brush tip for pretty much everything, even things I should be using 
the chisel tip for. I just find that the chisel tip um, is more streaky, even when you're trying to even it out. And uh, it leaves, um, so what I'm looking for, more of a, like a bolder stroke, where I find that the brush tip um, is much lighter, a lot easier to blend with. But yeah, so now I'm just going to go in actually with my darker color first. <clears throat> Oops. Which is my, uh, or the darkest color first, which is the uh, V06. And I'm going to put in some, oops, I lost that over. I'm just going to put in some of these um, shadows. So we're going to go kind of all around the bottom here. And for some reason, I don't know if it's this particular marker or maybe the brush tip that's on. I don't know. Maybe it's the this, just this color. But I find that this marker like <laughs> like bleeds a lot. Like there's a lot of ink coming out of it, which makes it uh, kind of bleed a lot more. So you might find that. Um, some of your markers do that. I know I have a few that do that actually, and I have one that actually leaks sometimes, and it's, it's just so strange. I've never heard anybody else have a problem with this. I don't know what it is about my markers, but uh, yeah, I have one that if you have it upwards like this while you're coloring for any amount of time, it's just gonna like pour out. And I've never replaced the ink in it or anything like that. Like that's just it's still using the ink that it came with because I actually have never bought a refill for any of these yet. The only refill I have is the Colorless Blender. Um, I do need to get refills. I have some that need to be refilled. I just, they're expensive, so <laughs> I just haven't yet. Um, but as soon as I get a chance, I will. So yeah, I've just gone around the edges of everything um, and gone over the uh, the creases in the paper there. Um, I'm going to just widen this a little bit. And I'm going to just get this blended while it's still wet. So I'm using the marigold now. And I'm just going to go along these edges. Uh, not very far outside of them just yet. Just to blend them. Alright, I think that's good there. So then I'm going to go back in with our lightest color and just saturate this. Go back all over it. Um, this part in the middle will darken. And all of that will start blending. They make the funniest noises while you're coloring with the mace work. That's really funny, actually. So you'll notice too that when you go back over a color um, with a lighter color, um, I the I guess the uh, the ink that or the pigment to alcohol ratio is a lot less in the lighter color, so there's going to be a lot more alcohol in these lighter colors, and that's what makes them lighter. I and mean, that's how I'm pretty positive it works. So as you can see, like. This is kind of working like a colorless blender. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's starting to like lift up color. And that's how I'm blending them. And then it also darkens when I go over the, the lightest color because it's more saturated. I'm just gonna go on my chisel tip now.
I, I really want this to be a, like, colored, <laughs> because I'm going to go back in again with my medium colors, with the marigold, using the brush tip, I'm just going to just flick color in, uh, starting on the top here, and then also do some I'm just flicking upwards or downwards, whatever side you're doing at the moment. And I wanted it so saturated because I wanted this to blend out a little bit on its own. I will have to go back over it in a moment, but that helps. So now while this is still wet, you want to make these lines not so harsh. So they're just going, it's just really, honestly, you're just coloring again. I know it seems like a lot, but uh, it actually works really well. It's a really, it's a really interesting effect. And it does, a, it makes a really nice coloring job. Uh, you don't want to do this with everything because you're using a lot of ink this way and that's not uh, especially thrifty, but it's Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, right? Right. And you know what? Just like like watercolors, you can overwork Copics. Um, so there's like a fine line here that you <laughs> you're gonna not want to cross. Um, but uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks good. Okay, now it's time for the sprinkles, and all the sprinkles are, are my, is my lightest color in the base, so I'm just gonna go over all of them. And obviously you can switch around these colors and do whatever combination you like. Um, I just liked this one. And then I'm going with my darkest color just because um, I thought that they complemented each other a little bit better. And I will go back over in a moment and blend them out. And I'm not, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to do this so much faster, this ended up being a half an hour long video. Um, not putting the color in any particular spot, I'm just kind of laying it in there, like so. Okay, and then I'll just quickly go over and blend them. So it's not such a harsh uh, gradient. All right, and that is my big huge cupcake. <laughs> and then if you want to, if you prepared it for next week's um, for next week's cards, the pop up birthday card, um, all I did was fussy cut around, and I left a white border just because I thought that looked good. But yeah, right, and there you have it. If you like this video, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button down below, and you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. It's free to do, and we have a lot of fun on here, so I hope to see you around. Until next time, my crafty friends.